Florida and Hard Rock Stadium here in Miami. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Indianapolis Colts and the Miami Dolphins. Thomas Morstead to get this one started. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. Stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looking to throw on second down. Foles. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, a tight end. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. So from the 36 now, first and ten. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he's got Rome. And he makes it all the way down to the 19. 45 yards rushing for him now in his first two carries in the ball game. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he's wrapped up. Taken down, back at the 25. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range. And that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw. Oh, he's got his tight end, Mo Alley Cox, complete. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll run here with Taylor. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Javon Holland. And the Dolphins are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one-possession game, and that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. It was Quiddy Pay who made the stop coming off the edge. I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. From the 22, here's second and eight. Now Tua. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. And oh, that nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he will have a Dolphins first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. And again, it's Tug of Iloa. Throwing for the out route, he finds Wilson. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. 
And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and ten. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. We're scoreless after one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Well, they were intercepted the first time they had the football, but now they get it back, and it's still 0-0. And because of that, you know what the thought process is? Interception. What interception? It didn't really happen because they gave up no points. So go back on the attack. Go back and run the offense you believe will be successful. Find your playmakers and give them the football. On second and nine, Foles. And that is incomplete. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. Foles. Hits his target to tight end Mo Alley Cox. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. There's Foles. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Foles. He'll find Paris Campbell. That's complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. to throw again. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 17 yard line. Now the Dolphins are going to halt the action here. It's a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Again, he'll drop the throw. Touchdown! Mo Alley Cox from 17 yards out. And the Colts post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads him right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. But a really nice drive. And so they run it in on the two-point try. And it's so often, Charles, we talk about from the offense's perspective what you do on the two-point conversion. How about the defense? How do they play run versus pass? It's really difficult for them because I think most teams want to play for the pass. That's what they see most teams do. And so are you able to mass enough people inside if the team decides to run it? Very difficult. I think what you're seeing a lot more now, people blitzing the two-point conversion. They want you to make a quick decision and make it right now. There, the offense wins the battle for two. Hey. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. Give the tackle that time to Rodney McLeod. 
The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. 8-0 our score with two minutes left in the second quarter. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off by Julian Blackman. And the Colts are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. Second straight drive now here, Charles, that have ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to nerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one? Or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? He had to fight that time. Ran through one tackle, but ultimately he's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Back to throw. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. They'll look to throw now on first down. This one completes Alec Pierce. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Here's second and a yard. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he gets it down to the 32. Go, go, go. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Again, it's Taylor. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 18. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. Oh, and this turns into a mess as it's intercepted. Nick Needham picks it off, and he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down, two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL. Audio Sports. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. down on the scoreboard but they'll have it first as we get going in this third quarter Hill is going to take it out of the end zone well now how about this return he's to midfield he's at the 30 10 5 and he will score touchdown Miami that was a special return and it happened because he's a special returner. He has to have that approval from his special teams coach's head coach to bring it out of the end 
zone. But let's be honest, a lot of times when they bring it out of the end zone like he did there, they don't have approval. I mean, I think a lot of times they do, but correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes it's just a guy getting a feel, right? Yeah, exactly right. What's the advantage? Sometimes you just have to know when to break the rules. And if you do, you're taking on some responsibility. But he was happy to do so there. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Zaire Franklin. And the Colts are going to have it here just past the 25. It's interesting that when it comes to two-point conversions, even heavy run teams tend to throw the ball in these situations. In this case, this one was intercepted. Yeah, they weren't fooled. They were ready for the pass, picked it off. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Here we go, here we go. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And their defense just helped them out by getting the football back on the opening drive here in the second half. And now can the offense follow through with points on their first possession? That's a big one for them because after the work the defense has done, they've got a chance here to open up this lead. I call it no game there on the first down play. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They run once more with Taylor. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. 64 yards rushing for him now to this point. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third down, here's Taylor. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. He handed it off there, but I don't really know if he would have kept it or tried to do anything else if it would have mattered. Yeah, it's not always a wrong read when a play gets stacked up. Sometimes they're just at the line of scrimmage with just too many bodies to maneuver. And as a result, now they're looking at a fourth down. They turn to Taylor on fourth. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Dolphins get the football in great field position. Shotgun with Mostert, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. That one complete to Hill. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Okay, ready? Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now a give to Mostert, running right. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Here's a handoff to Mostert running left. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. 
They'll try and run here with Mostert. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Tug of Iloa going for it on fourth down. And he's got his tight end, Gesicki, in the end zone. Touchdown, Dolphins. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Dolphins have scored again in this third quarter, this time to move out in front. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And it's two that pushes their lead down to five. It's 13-8. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. This will be fielded inside the five. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. The 40. Past the 20. And they are not going to catch him. He's in. Touchdown, Colts. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there. And he'll get into the end zone to push the lead up to a field goal. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And a very solid return out across the 45-yard line before going out of bounds. For a quick second there, I thought we were about to have a repeat performance of a kickoff return for a touchdown. This guy's on fire today. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. A good balance attack for that last. Oh, and two are going to be intercepted for the third time. Picked off by Julian Blackman. And the Colts are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. I tell you, Brandon, it seems like this guy's been all over the field so far. That's his second interception of the game. And so much of playing defense in the NFL, especially when it comes to defending the pass, is all about positioning and technique. And this is fantastic work on both fronts there. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL. Here we go, here we go, here we go. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them or bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you see that he will not be able to get away as Furls has taken down. The sack there by Bradley Chubb. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. They'll set up a throw. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And it'll be a turnover on downs. From the gun, a run with Mostert. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, 
Their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Big third down, a field goal from this spot, 57 yards as they hope to move it a little closer. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Faison. And the Colts are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Boy, the coverage there airtight as he comes away with the interception. Love that observation there because they were taking a shot at the end zone. But you're right about the coverage. Absolutely tremendous. And this they could clip for a training tape. Staying with him down the field, locates the football in the air, and comes away with the interception. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where I'm covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Pastor, you said big third down. I put the word big in capital letters here. And he is going to have a Colts first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They go to the ground again with Taylor. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. 85 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. On second down, it's Taylor. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up the third down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. They're able to convert with a gain of four. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. First and ten, Taylor now. Emmanuel Agba there on the stop. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you watch high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. The carry here for the big tight end. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Running straight ahead, Taylor. 
Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He's just short. He got six of the seven he needed, so that leaves a decision here on fourth and a yard. And that will get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. Try to punch it in with Taylor. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. Well, CD, for the losing side, they had opportunities in this one, but big plays just didn't go their way, especially late, and they have to suffer the L here. It certainly felt like that takeaway, once it happened, it knocked the wind out of their sails, and they just couldn't get their equilibrium back. 